afternoon, everyone. And I want to thank you all for being here for today's Media Roundtable. So I'm proud to tell you that yesterday, our eighth red tape package, the Fewer Fees, Better Services Act, received royal assent. So when I introduced this bill at Queen's Park on February 22nd, I did so with such great confidence, knowing that we're building on the strengths of the work that we've accomplished through previous semi-annual red tape reduction bills. Bills that have laid a solid foundation and have made a real and lasting impact on the way people, communities, and businesses interact with our government. So on day one of our mandate, we started working towards revitalizing how the government provides information to job creators. So we started working toward building mechanisms and standards to hold the government accountable for the service delivery. And today, we continue to streamline processes that empower the people of Ontario and help them succeed by creating greater transparency, more predictability, and more certainty, making Ontario the choice for investment-ready businesses all across North America. We, this government, have opened Ontario's doors to doing business. We've removed hundreds of burdensome requirements. We've cut red tape so businesses can do what they do best, serve their customers rather than being bogged down by unnecessary government scrutiny and paperwork. Since day one, we've been relentless in finding ways to cut red tape and put money back into the pockets of hardworking Ontarians. This has resulted in a reduction of 6.5% in the number of regulatory compliance requirements affecting businesses and almost $400 million in net annualized compliance cost savings to businesses and people across our province. The Fewer Fees, Better Services Act will continue along this path. So we'll be cutting costs for millions of Ontario vehicle owners by refunding license plate sticker renewal fees paid since March 1st of 2020. And we're giving commuters a break by removing tolls from highways 412 and 418. And this responds to particularly to requests from municipal leaders and indigenous communities in the Durham region. And we're helping to level the playing field for Ontario businesses by changing the government's approach to procurement. The change will strengthen the province's supply chain and help domestic businesses grow and create good paying jobs. We'll provide more flexibility related to provincial assets by creating a center of realty excellence. This holistic approach across all government owned properties will ensure priority surplus properties align with key programs including affordable housing and long-term care. Now we're also establishing a single window for business services, along with the service standard guarantees, so businesses can track the information they need from government. And this would include providing realistic timelines for approvals, permits, and licenses. And part of the single window will act as the new front door for entrepreneurs looking to start a business. In essence, it will cut time it takes to new businesses to go from concept to doors open faster and more efficiently. After all, a strong economy needs entrepreneurs. It needs innovative thinkers and risk takers. And with initiatives like this, we'll help them on that journey to success. The actions we've taken are an essential part of accomplishing our goal of putting people first, making Ontario the best North America has to offer as a place to do business and a place where government leads by example in offering unmatched customer service. So Ontario is a solid choice for those looking to invest and our aim is to keep it that way by making this province the best place in Canada to open, to grow a business, to welcome newcomers and to raise a family. Lee Voice, you have a question? Yes, um, Neenaji, can you tell us something yes. about this uh, digital, I don't know, uh, digital programs, digital main street? Is it covering oh. the entire Ontario or just restricted to some certain cities? No, no. Uh, so Digital Main Street, it's one of my favorite programs that we have. Um, so we support the Digital Main Street. It's, um, it's done by the Ontario Business Improvement Association. So they um, administer the program. So what it does, it allows businesses to have an online presence. So maybe they have a website, for example, but they don't have an online payment system. So as we got, this is a program pre-pandemic, but as we got into the pandemic, many businesses had no online presence whatsoever. 
they didn't know how to sell their products they didn't know what to do so some some did some had something and you know i've gone across this province to many different cities many different areas rural communities northern communities so this is open to many different communities initially it was only open to business improvement associations but not everybody has one of those so i one of the things i worked on as soon as i got into this role was to make sure we could broaden it to anyone um, so now you apply and uh, you can get $2,500 and you'll be um, what we call the digital service squad. They will help you, um, you know, how to take photos to make um, your products look better online so that you people, it's aesthetically pleasing for people to purchase, to put an online payment system. So a lot of people say, you know, I have these products, call me and, you know, we can work on getting it to you. Now they can go on, they can purchase it, click payment, it's secure, it's safe. And then that item is now shipped out to, to you very quickly. So for many businesses that I've spoken to, this has saved their business throughout the pandemic. Every single day, if you, if you look at the OBIAA Twitter feed, you'll see every day that they're talking about a different business that has succeeded and how they've succeeded through this program. So it's a program we just added an extra $30 million into. Um, we're gonna continue to do that because it is so successful. Um, and you know, all these businesses have really benefited from it and we want to do more. It is very- Can I ask important. one more? Can yeah. I ask one more question? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, it's just um, this is a new thing, you know, the women's economic security program. You said it's so marginalized women. I mean, how do you select these individuals? Do they apply or who, who decide who are marginalized? <laughs> so it is, it is a, a program that you have to apply into. Um, but we are looking, you know, it, it's a new program that we're trying to get out and get the word out for, uh, for women, for indigenous communities, black, racial minorities. Um, low income, uh, we just want to encourage more people to come out and say, you know, I have this great idea, I have this great product, I can make this, um, and I, but I want to be able to get it out to the community, I want to be able to serve the public, I want to be able to sell my product, and this is a program that will help one network, it will help them, uh, you know, um, purchase space or purchase equipment, uh, and, and there's many, there's, it, it's, it's such a great program that we want to encourage more women uh, to be entrepreneurs. Um, you know, women have been amazing entrepreneurs in the past, and there's so many with great ideas and great ventures uh, that we want to just support going forward so that they can also have those same opportunities that sometimes, you know, just because of, you know, they're not able to get that initial funding, they're just not able to get back to that next step. So we can help just prop them up a little bit to do that. Um, but they're great programs and there are a number of programs that are available for people. Uh, we have another program called the Futurepreneurship Program. Um, uh, it's a great program where um, between the ages of 18 and 39, so it's looking for our younger group um, and how they can become entrepreneurs. So that's another very successful project that not only has been uh, ongoing for a few years now, we've actually added more funding into there so we can encourage more. So we work with the colleges, the universities um, and other groups uh, that mainly work with that age group and uh, it has been extremely successful. And, you know, I hear every day about some of the success stories and some of the ideas that they're coming out with. And, and some of them are brand new immigrants. They're young, but they're brand new immigrants. Uh, they've just gone to college and they said, you know, I want to do this and I think it's a great program. And they've done extremely well. And I'm proud of the, you know, um, that entrepreneurship nature that they have in them. It's been, like I said, it's been unbelievably successful. And it's government doing what they need to do just to help them get started. You know, we're not just, you know, throwing money at something, but they are actually providing a service or providing goods that we need, so. What about marginalized men? Will you be helping them also? Will there be a separate program for them? I always believe that no one should be excluded. So there are other programs that are available um, for different ideas, different things. So yeah, if there's a specific area that people are interested in, let us know. And we'll find ways to help support in some way. Um, it's not always money. Sometimes it's just a connection uh, with, with someone else that's doing something perhaps similar that they can work together as well. Um, but as a government to help network and bring those people uh, together too. So, you know, any way that we can support entrepreneurship and help people realize their dream. 
right? So it's, uh, I think it's a great way for us as a government to do that. And uh, as a minister of small business, I'm very proud of the work that we've done over the last uh, four years in helping businesses get up, get started, even through these unbelievable challenging times of the pandemic. Uh, you know what, uh, I have to give kudos to our small businesses. They've really stepped up, they've stayed open, to servers, they, you know, they, the restaurants have done a great job, even if they've only been able to do takeout and delivery, we've tried to, to support them in ways of having patios open, uh, being able to sell alcohol with delivery, we've done many, taken many steps to support them in lots of different ways, and uh, we'll continue to do that to, to make sure that we support our businesses. I just, well, I want to thank each and every one of you, like I said earlier, um, you know, this pandemic has been difficult on everyone, including all of you in the media, and uh, I want to thank you for you know continuing to provide uh, the public with the messaging that government has been able to give. Uh, it, it has been critical to all of us, and uh, I want to thank you all uh, for getting the messaging out. Like I said, for people getting vaccinated, uh, for people staying home when they needed to, and uh, we've had to count on you to do that. So we appreciate it so much. Our doors are open. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime. We're here to serve you. And um, I look forward to us getting together again very soon and hopefully in person. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.